해드리겠습니다. 태만에서 오신 분이고요. 어, 벤자민 구호 어, 교수님을 어, 소개해 드리려고 합니다. 굿 모닝 레디 아이스 젠더맨 It is my great pleasure to be invited to come to here to share my experience about human self protection with you and uh, to accept this international invitation is quite a challenge for me because I have no idea about who is my audience. And the, the, the topics give me is training issue of IRB community member. <clears throat> uh, when I received this topic, I think that is that another talk about training issue of IRB a scientific member or non-community member exists. But when I found that there is no such a topic there, so this topic has some impressions that mean maybe it means that the training of the IRB community member is important, but for the scientific member, maybe we do not need training. Do you mean that? I'd like to know that how, mu how much of you uh, IRB members, could you raise your hand please? Okay. How much of you are not IRB members? Could you raise your hand please? Okay, thank you. <coughs> could I have my first slide please? <coughs> okay. <coughs> the mission of IRB is to protect the right and welfare of human subject participation in research activity. Everybody agree, right? So the mission is clear. But when you deal with all the enjoy the including in the operational IRB, you got a lot of complaint. Common complaint against IRB, including they complain that IRB are not efficient, ask questions not related to human subject protection, requirement do not make sense, or conflict of interest, or some sounds like a white group or something like that. Because those investigators are much more clever or wise compared to IRB member. Do you agree? Those IRB members here, do you agree? Those investigators are very clever person, so they know everything. Is that true? Yes, they know everything. So they cannot understand why you IRB member are so stupid you cannot know this. But uh, our that we IRB member are much closer to the research subject. We are much, not so clever, we are a little more stupid compared to the investigator. So we can tell the investigator what is the study subject do not know that we like to remind the investigator. Not everybody is has clean thinking or speak so fast as you do. So when the investigator have a chance to interact with IRB, this complaint come out. They consider the IRB is too, not so efficient and ask questions. Some, uh, of course, some of them uh, need to be improved by the IRB, but some of them are really misunderstanding between the investigator and the IRB. The most, most strong a challenge to the IRB is founded in the science 2006 in the editorial says that mission creep in the IRB world. It says that IRB, our IRB system is endangered by excessive paperwork and expanding obligation to oversee work that pose little risks to subject. I think that's true because the most dangerous research not oversight by IRB only but oversight by the government. So we are be really, we just try to tell the investigator or the government something that they did not know, but that is not so important. That's important, but not so cause serious damage to them. As a non-scientist, usually you are not so clever as those investigators. But once you got the power to point it, those investigators, uh, you can point it whatever you want. Then they become, the IRB become over regulation and under protection of the human subject. So that's why they come out with a comment say that your requirement do not make sense because that's not what you mean. 
But the investigator, to, to, if you ask an investigator what you want, what you mean a good IRB, they will tell you that means a good response and tell me how to get you approved. They do not care the story that you want to tell them. They just want me to tell me how to get you approved and I want to make it as, so, as soon as possible. So uh, I have reviewed that or reflect the classes I have I teach and uh, all prepare in the Taiwan. Taiwan has IRB uh, for about 10 years. So we have a lot of IRB training course to the IRB member. But I must confess that's not very successful. So I found that uh, the, the more important training, not only to the IRB member, but also to the IRB administrator. And uh, if you go to the primer, they, go, they have a class called IRB 101. I think that's a very good outline for what should be teach for a new IRB member, no matter of the uh, your scientific back, background or a community member. First is the ethic and the history. What is ethics? Ethics means some reflection or some the common pattern of the communication in your society. And also, you need to know the history of the IRB. And in the primer, because that's a US based, so you need to know the federal regulation related to the conduct research involving human subject, and also need to know the IRB procedures to review research involving human. So that's the uh, IRB 101 uh, primer sample agenda. In the beginning, welcome in introduction, and then tell you the history for about one hour and a half. Then, after the break, then that, that will be the federal regulation. And in the afternoon, that will come out the presentation of a case and study to have a real research, and then allow the new IRB member to discuss about what you would like to suggest for this pro proposal to be improved. And then, crossing with the uh, question and answer and also the discussion. And that's the IRB 101, or the initial training for the IRB member. I am very appreciate to that you must know the history. Somebody told me that if you are more emphasized on history, that means you are getting old. Uh, I do not think I'm really old, but I found that in the IRB education, history is very important. You must know that why we need an IRB review. This is a scheme about the non-US and also the non-US and the US developed system and finally merged to the, the global, the same standard together. So you, maybe you can have some overview about how the <coughs> global uh, IRB developed. And uh, of course, you, maybe you will, you will mention about the November Court, Declaration of Helsinki, and also the Berman Report. To my understanding, in US, when you review your history about IRB development, I think you will mention about Tuskegee study. In Taiwan, uh, we, when we teach about the IRB, the history of IRB, of course, we will mention about the global history of the human subject protection. But in Taiwan, we like to mention that why Taiwan have IRB. The beginning of Taiwan IRB is due to general reviewers requirement. Some very good investigator submit their paper to the journal and the journal editor reviewer asked that you must submit the IRB approval letter. So we set up our IRB to be fulfill all the journal's requirement. Then after the GCP were introduced to Taiwan, as the GCP requirement, we need to have IRB. But finally, that's about three years ago, two or three years ago, we have a Personal Information Protection Act. Since the research, human subject research is collecting, collecting uh, human subject information, so the, to be and uh, fulfill the P Personal Information Protect Act. So we have set up another law that's called the Human Research Act. 
that make the IRB become legal requirement in Taiwan. So I'd like to let the IRB member, every IRB member, know the history of the IRB, why we need IRB review. Because IRB review is quite different than any other review. For those scientific background, background IRB member, they have very experienced reviewer. But they review uh, from the peer review point of view. They review for funding the research. They review for publish a paper. But that's not the same as an IRB review. IRB review is like to reflect the social voice to that research. So that's quite different. That's why I like to say that both the scientific background IRB member and the community member also both need uh, IRB training because they must know that the IRB review is different from those other scientific review. Of course, when, the, when you come to the Bernward report, that's a very good guideline, as it says that ethical principle and guideline for the protection of human subject or research. In the first part, they divided the research versus practice. And this is very difficult for many physicians to understand they consider their practice involve research and their research is inside the practice. So they need some time to divide these two. And of course, then after that, that's the ethical principle and the application about respect, respect for a person, beneficiency, and justice. <coughs> the, the, another point I like to say about the Berman report is the Berman circle. Berman Circle is a very important concept to IRB member. Berman Circle says that not, not only the IRB is the one who is responsible for human cyber protection. The human cyber protection is a shared responsibility among IRB, investigator, subject, federal government, and the institute. So IRB member, please do not take the position as a police to the investigator. This is a shared responsibility. Not only you care about the human subject, the study subject, the investigator also is very care about the study research subject. So we are shared responsibility. We are cooperate together to protect the human subject, not only IRB member. So please don't take, consider investigator as a potential crime and try to find something error on them. Uh, about the regulations, of course, if uh, you are US-based, then you can read all of this in US and Court of Federal Regulations. But in Taiwan, uh, we did not need to do this. In Korea, you did not need to go through this also. Please do your part. For, for example, this is Taiwan's uh, law about the content of informed consent. That's not, not the same as the US one. For if, so if you have human research or a clinical trial, that different requirement. So you must know the law, uh, law you must lo know the, what the requirement by law. <coughs> After the basic IRB training, and the premier says say, there comes the IRB 201, that will provide the knowledge needed to become experienced IRB chair, member, and staff. IRB 101, give you an overview, and then you can join the meeting and learning from the, uh, learning from doing. But IRB 201 is more uh, theory based. Then, I mean that you must, more, 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 you must know more about the uh, knowledge and the skill to serve as an effective IRB reviewer. <coughs> so please know that this course will not cover administrative issue. Really, to make an IRB operation success, IRB administrator is very important. Then IRB 201 is only for the review process, not about the administration issue. So in IRB 201, the brief overview of ethical and regulation criteria for review and research overview, for example, the risk and the persistence are minimized, how to do, to do the risk and the benefit assessment, what means the selection is equitable? Also, uh, research plan makes adequate provision for monitoring safety. 
when you consider the risk of the human subject, how could you design a reasonable monitoring plan to ensure the safety of the human subject? Adequate proportion to protect privacy and maintain confidentiality. For a clinical physician, they never, they, they, really, they, they really have an idea about what means confidentiality because they always take care of the most secret parts of the patient. So they have no idea about privacy and confidentiality. So we must remind them. And uh, criteria eight is about the vulnerable and cohesion or undue influence. Because a uh, physician is always a very strong or very powerful attitude to the patient. So they have uh, no idea about means vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable population or cohesion. So they need some time to understand. And to my understanding, that the physician had really have difficulty in, in understanding this point. And uh, then is the informed consent and also the informed consent process or the how to documentation that required by law. <clears throat> so, so that if after you finish this IRB 201, then you could be a good IRB member. <clears throat> so there is some suggestions to new IRB reviewer. Case study is much more important than lecture. When you listen to a lecture, you know maybe not. Because what they talk about, that's a principle. You must use a case study to understand uh, how to practice that principle. And then you might need to be familiar with the study design and research methodology. If you are new to the research, then you need to take some time to understand the different study design. After you are familiar with the study design, then you can catch what the study is doing very fast. And most of the IRB in Taiwan help the uh, help the uh, IRB member to, re to the companies of the re review by a checklist. That reminds you that you miss something during your review process. A simple re review op opinion means that there is, when you, after you finish review a protocol, there is some point that you uh, require the investigator to correct it. But please be, uh, be careful. Those opinion you ask the investigator to require the, to do, in, to uh, correct must be applicable. Some uh, suggestion, for example, you must care be, be, be careful when you do the informed consent process not to coerce coercion the uh, human subject. You can just uh, be much be, be, be careful about the safety of the confidentiality. Some are suggestion, some are requirement. But when you do the requirement, please make sure that's applicable. You please give suggestions rather than comment. This is not a good, uh, this is not a good informed consent. The investigator try to make it good. The reason why they turn in the so poor in, informed consent form is because they do not know how to write it good. So please give instruction or suggestion that please do change this paragraph to what? Then the investigator know how to follow. My last part is about the IRB Administrator 101. IRB is Administrator is the key person to make an IRB efficient, not only efficient in process, but also efficient in review. Because most of the IRB member, to my understanding, is part-time. So the IRB member just come and go. But the IRB administrator is a full-time job. So they are here all, all the time. So if you can have the IRB administrator much more knowledge about the IRB than the IRB board member, then the administrator can help the board member to do the appropriate review. So in the Premier IRB Administrator 101, that's a key component of research, they including key component of re human research protection, primary responsibility of the administrator, strategy and policy to develop and strengthen the institutional 
human research prospection program. And the agenda including overview of the uh, and uh, overview of the IRB as major and uh, tell <coughs> describe of the responsibility of an IRB administrator, including advising, advise, advise the uh, IRB chair, advise the IRB board member, advise the uh, investigator. Management protocol review when you receive it, when you send it to somebody, and when you receive it back, and also arrange for education, record keeping of the IRB meeting, and reporting any report any uh, AE or SAE to the uh, authorities and develop the IRB policy and procedures, handling allegation, compliance and non-compliance, off-site research or cooperate with other institute and, uh, to, to have some plan about quality improvement or the, to do some metrics of IRB and uh, PI. Manage of staffing and infrastructure. <coughs> uh, develop a philosophy of research administration. To my understanding, in, based on my the 10 years experience working in the IRB, I found that I will strongly suggest to have a good IRB administrator is a key point for a success IRB operation. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>